Thomas and the Magic Railroad Little engines can do big things. Things were very busy on the island of Sodor. Sir Topham Hatt was away on vacation, and all the engines were doing their best to be really useful. But Thomas the Tank Engine did not feel useful at all. James teased Thomas for bumping into the buffers. Gordon scolded Thomas for being late. They made Thomas feel unimportant. Important is big, Gordon told Thomas, and we are big engines. You are small. Bossy sprockets, grumbled Thomas. I'll show them. Little engines can do big things, Thomas said to himself, especially when they have nice blue paint like me. But just then, Harold the helicopter flew by, making a cloud of dust. Thomas's nice blue paint got all dirty. Two nasty diesels made fun of Thomas. Let's start laughing now, they said. And they did. Thomas was determined to prove that little engines could be really useful too. That night, Thomas was right on time doing his mail route. He even comforted Percy, who felt bad for being late. The next morning, Thomas saw Henry looking glum. Morning, Henry, peeped Thomas. What's the matter? I've got boiler ache, Henry told him. Thomas offered to fetch some special coal for Henry. Thank you, Thomas, said Henry. Special coal will make me feel much better. Thomas smiled and puffed away, feeling really useful indeed. Near a set of old buffers, Thomas set to work collecting the coal cars, but the last car was not coupled properly. Thomas didn't notice the coal car sliding quietly backward. He didn't notice it mysteriously disappeared through the old buffers. It wasn't until later that Thomas realized the coal car was missing. I was up near the buffers when the last coal car disappeared, Thomas told Percy. Percy got very excited. Maybe those buffers are the entrance to the magical railroad, he cried. The engines had heard the legend of the magic railroad and of the beautiful golden engine called Lady, who gave the railroad its magic power. Lady had disappeared long ago, and the magic railroad had disappeared with her. Percy, you are clever, Thomas exclaimed, and hurried away. Thomas steamed back to the old buffers. He knew that bringing Lady back would be really useful, but he was nervous, too. What if I go on the magic railroad and my wheels don't work? thought Thomas. What if it's dark? But Thomas kept going. He reached the old buffers and passed right through. The magic railroad was dark and scary, but it was also beautiful. Thomas found the missing coal car. With the car coupled pr properly, he continued along the magic railroad. Thomas passed through another set of buffers and into a world he had never seen before. This was the other end of the Magic Railroad and the home of Lady the Golden Engine. 
Lady had not run in many years, but with the help of the special coal from the island of Sodor, she was soon steaming again. As Lady moved along, her lovely, happy face was revealed once more. The rails became clear and golden, and beautiful shavings fell behind her and gathered between the tracks. The magic railroad was coming back to life. Thomas followed Lady back through the buffers. With a roar, the two little engines burst into the island of Sodor. Hooray for Thomas, the engines cheered. Lady was back, and the magic railroad would run once again. You see, said Thomas, little engines can do big things. Side note, I just think it was really oddly how they drew her eyes. It kind of freaked me out through the whole thing compared to the movie, which was a lot nicer. See, there, there, that was fine, but everything in the book was like, I don't know.